Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining our session today. Um, like Nash said, my name is Tim from Smile. Um, I've been on Smile's content team for about two and a half years now. I've written and edited dozens, if not hundreds, of pieces of content, blogs, ebooks, um, videos, podcasts, um, all about loyalty and retention and how, like Dasha said, how to turn those one time sales into repeat customers. Um, prior to being at Smile, I have uh, almost 10 years of just sales, business development, account management, um, and marketing in different tech um, for different tech companies. Right before Smile, I actually worked for a robotics company, um, working with um, really cool research robotics. And so um, we were. It was really interesting moving from that to Smile uh, a few years ago um, and learning how to market from the B to B, B to G um, world and into uh, more directly B2B and, and moving into BSC as well. Um, so it's it's been an adventure just seeing like the full breadth of, of the full um, sales cycle from sales, marketing and across all the different types of industries. Um, just a little bit about me again. Um, the last book I read was Dune. Um, I'm excited for the movie to come out, um, but I did see that they just delayed it probably because of COVID until late next year, which is a little disappointing. The last online purchase that I made um, were, uh, the last one was Rose and Rex, which is a, a toy store. I'm, my wife and I are getting a very early jump on our uh, Christmas shopping. Uh, I think our goal is to have it done before November, just so we don't even have to worry about it. Um, and then online groceries as well. Um, and like many of you, I did probably spend way too much over the past couple of days. Um, with Amazon Prime Day, but we're going to talk about how to just completely ignore and blast by Amazon and crush it um, without them. <laughs> um, we can't really talk about loyalty programs or e-commerce at all, really, without talking about COVID. Um, obviously, it's completely changed the way that businesses are ru running. There's way more uh, businesses than there used to be. Um, platforms like Shopify obviously make it way easier to start a business. And because of COVID, if you didn't have an e-commerce business, you were going to struggle to survive the past few months. Um, you can see the stat here that 47% of people um, that were surveyed said that they're planning to either do like curbside pickup or um, do some sort of pickup or delivery for their shopping for Black Friday. Um, people just aren't planning on doing traditional retail Black Friday shopping that they used to. Um, every, obviously, everything's either online or people want to do that kind of click and collect or curbside pickup. Um, additionally, we've seen um, a few different businesses more specifically the larger box stores say they're actually going to close on Thanksgiving. Um, they've said that it's mostly to give their customers some much needed time off, which undoubtedly frontline workers need it. But I also think it's partially to try to curb some of the Black Friday um, craziness that's happening um, that's happened the past few years. Um, and then even brands like Home Depot and I think Target um, are doing longer seasons of sales rather than a specific Black Friday, Cyber Monday. You know, Home Depot specifically said they're going to be doing like two months of really big sales instead of just like a specific BFCM strategy. This slide here um, is showing just kind of how the seasonality of typical e-commerce has happened. Um, you know, if, if you've been in e-commerce for any span of time and been through a, a BFCM before, you've really felt this. Um, you can see that spike um, every year at Q4 right before, um, right during Black Friday, Cyber Monday, that spike of, this is the percentage of e-commerce um, in the total retail sales cycle. Um, so you see that spike every Q4 for Black Friday, um, but right at the end there, um, I can't remember, no, I didn't highlight it, but you can see the giant spike when COVID hit that just like everyone is shopping online and e-commerce is just soaring. Um, so it's, it's you know, as good a time as ever to be in e-commerce. Um, you know, e-commerce is really having the time of its life. If you've had your ducks in a row beforehand, um, you know, everything's coming up in It's It's really, um, with the right apps, the right technology, and the right strategies, um, it's really an amazing time to be in e-commerce, and you can really crush it, this BFCM. Um, part of that, part of the whole e-commerce BFCM is loyalty, um, customer loyalty, obviously, um, has been around for over 100 years through different um, you know, buy three, get the fourth free um, points programs. There's been all different sorts of um, loyalty programs in place from thousands and tens of thousands of brands. And that's because it works. It, it really does. It helps turn those one-time customers into loyal repeat buyers. 
And the trick though, is that you can't just set up an e or a, a Bothy program and just forget about it. You, you can't just um, set one up and hope for the best. You, you really have to work to make it work for your brand and your customers. Um, one size doesn't fit all. You do have to tailor your loyalty program to work for your brand and work for your customers and what they're expecting from you and from your brand. Um, and so we're going to go through um, three different ways how to create a loyalty program that isn't ignored, um, both through BFCM and then just in general. I think uh, with BFCM, a lot of the tips and tricks that you hear from everyone might be specifically targeted for this season, but it's really applicable no matter what time of year it is, especially with COVID and how um, insane e-commerce is, it's not going to go away anytime soon. I, I don't think things are really going to normalize to what they were pre-COVID for quite a while. And so any of the tips and tricks for the volume that we're talking about for BFCM, those are going to be applicable just continuing. Um, so these are three ways um, for BFCM, but also going forward um, to create your loyalty program and optimize it so it's not ignored by your customers. Um, so the three things we're gonna cover, uh, don't waste your engagement, make loyalty part of your brand and make rewards rewarding. So first thing is about don't waste engagement. Um, I think a lot of the times you hear that, you know, uh, no email is a bad email um, if there's value to it. And I think that's true. I think it's true whether it's email, whether it's SMS, whether it's social strategy, as long as you're adding value, there's no such thing as too much. Um, if customers are excited to get your emails, they're excited to see your social posts, you can't have too many of them. If they're adding value, they're enjoying it. And that same can be applied to your loyalty program. Um, you can embed loyalty information no matter where you're communicating with your customers. Um, got a few examples here. Um, you know, you can use your website itself. You can have different email banner or different website banners on the homepage. You can have announcement bars at the top talking about your loyalty program. Um, you can use um, pop-ups. You can use so many different apps to integrate with your loyalty program. Adam was talking in the last chat um, chapter talk um, about integrations, and really, you can use loyalty to integrate with Clavio. You can integrate with um, Recharge, you can integrate with all of these different apps um, and really port that loyalty information wherever you're engaging with customers. So if you're sending an email with Clavio, you can connect your loyalty program to Clavio and inject loyalty information right into that. I'll talk about that in a bit too. Um, but you can really inject loyalty information wherever you're engaging with your customers. So you're not wasting the opportunity to let them know that, hey, we have a loyalty program. This is valuable to you. There's it's not just here for the sake of being here. It's here to benefit your customers. I mean, obviously we know ultimately it's about building your brand and your revenue and your bottom line, but you're not going to get there without building those relationships with your customers. And so having these things in place um, to not waste engagement, you know, don't send an email out that doesn't have loyalty information um, embedded in it. Um, let customers know that, hey, we have a loyalty program. If it's been a while, um, you know, use Clavio and target all your customers that aren't part of your loyalty program and send them an email and just let them know, hey, we have a loyalty program. Here's some of the benefits. And, you know, like this one here from One Love Organics. Join the, the they call theirs the, the Love Club. Um, get five bucks off your next purchase. Have that benefit to them. Say, hey, here's value this is why you should join. Don't just say, you know, we have a loyalty program, but this is the actual value that you can get as a customer by joining our program. Um, you know, use email banners. Um, if you're sending an email about Black Friday promotions or just any other promotions, embed that information um, using the different integrations to just remind them that, hey, there's points um, that you can earn. You can join our program um, specifically for Black Friday. Let them know, hey, have you joined a rewards program? Make sure you do, because when you're shopping for Black Friday, you're gonna earn points for that. Um, and you can really, no matter what channel, this is all email here, but whether it's social, whether it's email, whether it's um, using um, on-site, uh, like a help desk, like um, with your, whatever it is you're doing really, you can use loyalty information and let customers know that you have a program, there's value to them to join it. And then also you can, um, use that loyalty information and embed it right in. I'll show that in a little bit here. So you're not gonna waste any of the engagement you have wherever you're talking to customers. You can let them know or remind them about your loyalty program. And the next thing is to make loyalty really part of your brand. Um, oftentimes you, with loyalty programs, like a, a lot of other things, it's really easy to tell when it's not a good one. Um, 
it's it sticks out like a sore thumb. It doesn't jive with the brand. It really feels tacked on. But when it's a really good one, it's a really cohesive feeling, and it just reflects your brand. It reflects your um, identity, your values, even your branding, your colors, um, and it just the loyalty program feels like an extension of your brand aesthetic, and it feels like an extension of communicating with your brand, and that just makes it more enjoyable and more valuable for your customers to engage with. Um, Liquid Death is one of my favorite ones. They're uh, irreverent, but um, I think they do a really great job branding their program. Um, they call theirs the cult. I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, Liquid Death, but it's it's canned water, and that's it's just canned water. But they built this amazing brand around the concept of canned water and it being you know really badass to to drink water, and it's not bro culture, but it is, you know, they're a San Francisco startup, they've got venture capital. Um, and instead of just throwing on a loyalty program, they've really made it part of the brand experience. Um, so they've got, you know, they named it the cult instead of earning just like points, they have skulls, they have um, specific icons, they have banners. Um, you know, they offer different vandalism sticker packs is the different um, referral bonuses that they give. And they've really just made it part of the brand experience. It's not you know, join the Liquid Death um, Happy Go Lucky Club and here's some flowers because it would really wouldn't jive with the rest of their brand. They've made it really cohesive and it makes it fun to engage with. Um, you can see the launcher on their website and it just, it flows really well and it feels like a natural extension of the rest of their brand. Another example of this is Inkbox. Um, they've got the Ink Fam um, that they've built this whole community around um, and, you know, the idea of family and community um, just really goes well with the whole ink box um, vibe. Um, you can get from perks, you can move up through different tiers that they call chapters, um, but they really, their whole brand aesthetic is about community. And so calling it the ink fam just really builds that out and hits home. And so it's, it's not weird to see their loyalty program. It really feels like a natural extension of their brand. The last one here that really shows this is uh, Jimmy Joy. Um, they're a really fun um, nutrition brand and they've really taken the, the, the joy and the, the fun of their brand and really put that through their entire uh, loyalty program. So between the different tiers like Earthling, Astronaut, Time Traveler, um, you earn time tokens instead of points. Um, they've you know matched, you can see in the bottom here, their loyalty launcher, they've really matched exactly with their branding so they've made it just another part of their brand and like I said it's it's when you experience a bad loyalty program that's not well branded you really feel it and it's it creates a huge disconnect and you don't want to really engage with it and your customers won't either they're not going to want to engage with it if they if it's just not fun if it's not engaging if it's not tied to your brand aesthetic so making loyalty a complete part of your brand so that means um, the, how you name your program, um, how you name your points currency, how you name your VIP tiers, having, um, you know, branded icons like the liquid death ones um, that just make the whole thing part of your brand just makes it easier for customers not to ignore. Um, the last thing here is um, the last point that I have is about making rewards rewarding and what I mean by that is the the average rewards program has a redemption rate of um, around 14%, 13.67, which it, it's okay. It's the average. Um, and so you, the average, the, the reward redemption rate, if you're not familiar with loyalty programs, is how um, how many points are outstanding, basically. Of all the points that you're giving out to customers, how many of them are actually being capped and redeemed? And so like 13.67 is okay. Um, but the problem with that is it basically just means if you're below that is that it means that you're not really showing your customers that there's value in cashing in the points that they've earned. They're building up this points balance, but there's no reason for them to come back. There's no reason for them to keep engaging with your brand, cashing in those points, getting discounts, getting whatever perks you've set up. Um, and one of the reasons that that happens is a concept called trivialization that I I think is really interesting. And it's, I, it was a blog post originally that I saw from Cogload about it, um, where there was some research done where people were asked to fill out a survey and in exchange, they were offered uh, a chocolate. Um, I think it was like a Hershey kiss or some really small chocolate. And people were like, sure, I'll fill out the survey for a chocolate. 
Um, and then a different set of people were asked to fill out a survey in exchange for like a nickel or a quarter or some very small amount of currency and um, people passed it up. And it was interesting because even though the actual value of the Hershey Kiss might have only been the same as the money that was offered, the perceived value is greater. So people, when you say, you know, do this in exchange for a nickel, it feels like a waste of my time. Like my time isn't worth spending to do this. And so it's, it's trivialization, trivializing their time and their money and their resources. And so the same thing can happen with your loyalty program. If you're making your points not worth enough, or if you're making the actions that people are taking not worth enough points. Um, if you're saying, you know, sign up for our newsletter and follow us on social media and engage with us on social and place an order and all these different things that they can do to engage the loads program and after all is said and done they can only get you know a dollar off their next order then people aren't going to bother doing it in the first place um, they're going to see that hey this isn't a loyalty program that's worth doing um, so i'm just not going to do it and so the, the the trick is finding that sweet spot with your own customers you know you know your brand you know your your margins to be able to give the right percentage back um, in points to make it worth their while so that's making the different earning actions that they have making those worth the right amount so that they're earning enough points that it feels worth it you know something you can do too is uh kind of not inflating but inflating the the value of things so instead of you know engaging with you on social for one point and then you can cash in 10 points for a dollar off if you just multiply those by 10 if you make engaging with social worth 100 points and cashing in a thousand points for a dollar off um, just having those multipliers makes it feel like they're they're earning more and getting more back um, so it's it's pairing those two things it's knowing how many points to give for different actions and then once they have those points it's knowing how much to uh, convert those two from points to dollars or points to percentage or points to uh, free merch or free shipping or however you want to structure your program um, but it's knowing your customers knowing what they value um, knowing what uh, earning actions they're going to resonate with to make it valuable and not trivial for them to engage their program so they build points up and then also so it's not trivializing um, the ability for them to pack those points in and have a higher than that you know 13 percent um, rewards uh, redemption rate and so one of the things you can do to help that once they have those points balances if you've figured out the trivialization but people still aren't quite uh cashing in the points as I at a ratio as you want them to is you can do things like on-site engagements. Um, so like Smile has a feature called nudges where you can actually um, have automatic prompts that say, hey, you know, you've got 2,000 points available, saved up, check out the different rewards that are available for you to cash that in. Um, and it's, it's intuitive. It's not like a giant full screen pop up. It's just a little nudge in the bottom corner of the screen that says, hey, you've got enough points to cash in for a reward or hey, you've actually cashed in your points for a free shipping coupon, but you haven't used the coupon yet. Um, and it just reminds them that, hey, you can do that. Um, there's also a referral nudge that says, hey, if you send a referral, this is the bonus that you'll get, or this is what the, the reward is. And it can just help them um, keep earning points in a way that feels rewarding and it feels natural and it's not in your face and um, it feels like a rewarding experience. The last thing here that um, I often recommend, especially during the Black Friday, Cyber Monday season is bonus points events. And I talk a lot about bonus points um, this time of year um, because it can be such a great alternative to discounting. Um, rather than having to give huge discounts to get customers to come to your store, if people are part of your loyalty program, you can let them know that, hey, instead of discounts or you know, instead of giant discounts, we're offering bonus points during BFCM. Instead of running like a 50% discount or a 40 or 30, you know, run just a 10 or 15% discount, but give double points. So every dollar, instead of, you know, spending a dollar and getting one point, or if every dollar is 10 points or 20 points, just doubling it. Um, so you can see um, in the example there for Enzo rings, instead of getting 10 points for dollar spent, they're giving their customers for 24 hours, 20 points for dollar spent. Um, same with the tops example there, um, just doubling points. I think theirs was a weekend where they doubled the points value. 
one level organics that example there they're just giving points away um, just to top people up i've seen uh, they're a canadian brand but indigo or chapters the bookstore um, they have plum rewards and they'll often send me emails and just be like hey we topped up your points to the next five dollar threshold for you to cash that in and it doesn't cost them a lot of money but it brings me back to the store to spend it um with the with the earning points campaigns the double points or the triple points however you want to do it the value there isn't just on BFCM. It's not just getting them to your store to spend more for BFCM. The value in a bonus points campaign is that they're building up this points balance that you can then prompt them to cash in afterwards. So it's taking that success from BFCM and pushing it into December, January, February. Um, we often see that. I didn't throw a slide in for it, but um, we often see brands run double points earnings for BFCM. So customers are building up this big points balance. And then um, in the weeks, months afterwards, running double point uh, redemption campaigns, where instead of cashing in a thousand points for $5 off, you cash in a thousand points for $10 off, or however you want to structure your program. And you can let people know, your customers know that beforehand, before the point, the campaign is coming during BFCM. You can even say, hey, this is a double points campaign, keep an eye out for a double points redemption campaign in the new year or something like that um, to let them know that, hey, if you save these points up, you can cash them in later. And so later when you email them and say, hey, we're running your double points redemption campaign, you're bringing them back to your store. And I, almost, I, I think it's more valuable than just having a discount because it's bringing them back and they're making more purchases. So you're getting them on your website, you have more chance to engage with them. Um, you can use all of your post-purchase emails to engage with them and prompt them um, to just build a better relationship with your brand. And that's ultimately what a loyalty program is doing is building relationships. And so all these different touch points, all these different engagements, um, the attempt to not be ignored is to build a stronger relationship with your customers. Um, it's to let them know that, hey, this is something that's valuable um to you and to us so let's keep this reciprocal um it's like a loop where you're giving them value they're cashing it in giving your brand value by spending more and then they're earning points and so you're giving them value back and it's just this reciprocity loop that just builds a strong relationship with your customers and your brand that just keeps them coming back again and again without having to do those giant discounts that we often see with bfcm um, you're not being ignored and you also aren't having to break the bank to do it either. Um, so those are the three points that don't waste any of your engagements, whether it's email, social, on-site, um, retargeting ads. Loyalty is part of your brand. So making your loyalty program really on brand, match your design, match your aesthetic, match your values um, so that it just feels like a cohesive part of your brand experience. And then make your rewards rewarding. Make customers feel like there's value in engagement with your brand. Um, so the points are valuable for them to earn, it's valuable for them to redeem, and they just feel that it's a rewarding experience no matter when they talk to your brand. And that is everything I have for today.